What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to synchronize multiple processes when doing parallel computing in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to synchronize and coordinate multiple processes in Python today. Now, we all know that Python does not support actual multi-threading because of the global interpreter lock. However, Python does support actual multi-processing, which means that we can use multiple different processes to work at the same problem at the same time in parallel. And whenever we have something like this, we usually need to introduce some coordination and synchronization because we have shared resources, shared values that are accessed by all these processes uh, at the same time in parallel. And the problem is when one process tries to write something, another process tries to read something, information might be lost and then the result is incorrect and inconsistent and not predictable. So in this video today, I want to show you a simple example of a counter being increased and decreased by multiple different processes. And I want to show you what happens when we do use synchronization and when we don't use synchronization. So I'm going to start here by importing multi processing. And I'm also going to import time to slow things down a little bit. And then we're going to define two functions, the first one being increase counter. And it's going to take the counter as an argument. Come on, stop mistyping here, um, increase counter. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to say for placeholder in range. And what we want to do here 20 times is we want to say counter dot value plus equals 10, for example, uh, and then we want to sleep. So time dot sleep for 0.1 seconds actually inside of the loop. So that's basically what we want to do here 20 times we want to increase the counter by 10. And this is the purpose of this function here. Now, then we're also going to have maybe I should just copy this here. I want to have a function decrease counter. And this function is going to do roughly the same thing. It's just going to subtract but not 10. Let's go with 50 maybe. And let's also make it a little bit slower just so we have some difference here. So 0 0.3 seconds, maybe. Um, and those are the two functions that we want to run in parallel now with multiple processes. So what we're going to do first is we're going to define the counter that we're going to pass to these functions. So the counter is going to be equal to and now since multi processing is not the same thing as multi threading, we don't have just, uh, the same shared memory space, we need to use an actual value here a multi processing value by defining it as a multi processing dot value. And what we pass here as a parameter is first of all, the data type I uh, for integer for number, and then zero as the default starting value. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say here increase underscore processes is going to be an empty list and decrease decrease processes is going to also be an empty list. The reason we want to have a list or we want to have two lists for those processes is because we want to also wait for them before we actually print the final result. Because uh, whenever we we start new processes, the same main process here that starts these processes continues to run. And we only want to print the result of the counter after all the processes have finished. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say for placeholder in range five, we want to create a new process P. So five processes for increasing five processes for decreasing, we want to say P equals multi processing dot process, actually with a capital P, the target of this process is going to be the increase processes function. And the arguments for now is just going to be uh, the counter with a comma to indicate that this is a tuple. Then we're going to say P start to actually start the process. And then we're going to add this process to the increase processes list. So we're going to append it. Then I can copy this here. And what's the problem here? Uh, oh, sorry, I wanted to actually have the increase counter function, not the increase processes list. So here to decrease counter function, and we don't call the function, we pass it as an entity. And here we basically do the same thing with the decrease processes. Come on, decrease processes append p. So five for increasing five for decreasing. And what we want to do now, this is why we have the list is we want to say for p in increase processes, p 
p.join. So wait for them to finish. Do the same thing for the decrease processes. And only after all of these processes are done, print the value of the counter. So, you know, you can calculate what should, uh, what you should get here as the output, but I've, I can run this now. And after a while, when this is finished, it gives me negative 3400. I can run this again now and see what happens. And I'm going to get, let's see, negative 3850. And I can run this a couple of times and I'm going to get different values, even though obviously what I'm doing here is every time the same thing. I mean, I have five processes that increase the number 20 times by 10. And I have five processes that decrease the number 20 times by 50. <clears throat> Sorry. So why do I get different results? And the reason is because there is no synchronization. Things are happening at the same time. Processes are writing, processes are reading, and you know, they are not synchronized. So while a process is writing, another one is reading, information is being lost, and we get inconsistent results. So what we can do here now is we can add a parameter here, lock to the increase counter function, and lock to the decrease counter function. And uh, what we want to do now is want to create here, also a lock, which is going to be a multi processing dot lock. And this lock now we can acquire this lock and we can release the lock and it can only be acquired once. So if you acquire the lock, you have to release it before someone else can acquire the lock again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say every time we want to change the value, we're going to first say lock dot uh, lock dot acquire like this. And when we're done, we're going to say, uh, actually, um, actually here, lock dot release. And we're going to do the same thing down here. And this is going to synchronize everything. Now, the only thing that we need to add here now is the argument lock to the process. And then we can run this and you will see that we will always get the same result, which is negative 4000. This is what you should get here as an output. And you will always get this if you use synchronizations, uh, if you use synchronization, or if you don't have multiple processes. Now, another way to write this is to not say acquire and release, you can use a context manager here, you can just say with lock. And with lock basically does the acquiring and the releasing for you. Um, for the indented code. So it acquires the lock, it executes the code that is indented here, and it then releases the lock afterwards. So we can also say just with lock here. And I can run this again. And you will see we get negative 4000 as a result again. There you go. So this is why you need to synchronize access to shared resources. And when you have shared resources across multiple processes, you use the dot value, there's also dot array and stuff like this. Uh, but you use dot value here in this case, and you use a lock to synchronize the processes. Now I also have videos on this channel on threading and on uh, actually synchronizing applications because with threading, you have very similar structure, you don't need to have these multi processing values because the values in a uh, or in in threads are in a shared memory space. So we can just access them. Uh, normally, but you need to have locks as well. And when you have multiple applications that maybe have a different code and don't have uh, are not related in any way, but they access the same file, you can use file locks. And I have a video on this channel where I explain how to do that as well. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.